Sad day yesterday, Tony Bellew getting knocked out in the sixth round of his fight against Adonis Superman Stevens. Uh, Stevenson even, I'd done a video earlier predicting uh, Stevenson by knockout. Um, hardly <laughs> hardly the most inspiring sort of tipping from a gambling sense because that was obviously a, uh, a strong favourite. Um, what impressed me about Stevenson in this fight was not his punching power and his ability to knock someone out because we already knew he possessed that but it was actually um, his ring general sip, the way he cut down the ring and the way he boxed. Um, Bellew tried to keep the fight at distance, um, in many ways fought quite a cagey fight I guess you can say. Uh, the first two rounds I felt that there was little that landed on Bellew in terms of you know, strong punches. Um, Bellew was on the back foot, Adonis Stevenson very much holding the centre of the ring and you know, backing him up, trying to get him into corners, trying to push him around a bit, but Bellew's movement was okay. Uh Stevenson's jab was good. Um you know, Stevenson threw up through the occasional left and it he did look he looked like he carried power that it was only gonna be a matter of time. Although the first two rounds were quite cagey, I, I scored them definitely in Stevenson's favour and I felt we were just sort of delaying the inevitable slightly. Um, what was quite impressive is despite the fact that Bellew was quite a bit taller and a lot bigger man than Stevenson, Stevenson's actually got a longer reach. I think he had an inch and a half longer reach than Bellew. And it was interesting that whilst you know Bellew was trying to fight at range, that didn't stop Stevenson from working a jab, working a one-two, um, that sort of thing. In the third and fourth rounds... Um, Bellew came more into it. I believe he bust uh, the champion's nose in the third. In the fourth, there was a quite dubious incident where Stevenson appeared to go down. Um, whether it was a knockout, a knockdown or not, I don't know. Um, my instinct is that it was probably a slip from Stevenson. He appeared to go down. You know, it was a bit fifty-fifty as to whether it was a knockdown or not. The referee judged it to be a slip. Uh, the punch from Belly didn't seem to be a great punch, more of a scuffing sort around the back of the head. And I think perhaps Stevenson's feet got caught up and he, he went down. Um, the fact that Stevenson got up and, you know, went on to dominate the round and, you know, didn't spend any time on the canvas suggests it was probably more of a slip. Um, so I, I, I scored third, fourth, fifth to Stevenson as well. In fact, in this fight, I scored every single round to Stevenson. I thought he was holding uh, Sway, being the ring general. He was coming forward. I think he looked like he was a better boxer than than Bellew. And it looked at any moment as though the power was going to get involved. You know, Stevenson was throwing a left. And it may not have been catching Bellew clean, but you could tell it was a big shot. And you knew it was going to cause problems when it landed. Um, I think in the sixth round, Stevenson got strong advice from his trainer. You know, go out, push him where you want to and, and go from there. And Stevenson was really backing Bellew up. Um, he threw a, a tremendous left, sort of caught, went under Bellew's guard and kind of caught him on the, the chin, put him down, fair play to Bellew, he got straight back up again. Um, he was he was noticeably wobbled, but he um, he got back up, he didn't get knocked spark out in the end, he was in a corner, Stevenson landing multiple heavy shots to the chin, very good stoppage by the referee, no complaints this time round, um, and yeah, Bellew... Finished the fight on his feet, so finished with credit, but um, yeah, it was noticeably beaten. Um, I think he was outboxed every round. Had it gone to points, Stevenson would you know, have won in his comfort zone. Obviously, Bellew didn't have the, the power to compete with Stevenson in the, you know, in the, uh, in the hitting stakes, so we say. But in terms of Bellew's tactics, he kept in the fight. He, you know, he, he didn't absorb too much damage. My problem with them is, whilst he you know, did a good job of staying in the fight and staying relevant, at no stage did he really look like he was going to win. Um, at no stage did he really look like he was going to take rounds off Stevenson. Um, certainly at no stage did he look like he was going to knock Stevenson out, like he'd been talking about in the, you know, the pre-fight press conference. So I'm not 100% sure what his tactics were. The, the only time he looked... Slightly dangerous is when he actually put the pressure on Stevenson. You know, when Tony came forward and forced Stevenson onto his back foot. And we saw that more in the, the third round. And it was only for a brief sort of 30 second burst. But there was a few times he landed on Stevenson. And Stevenson took the punches well enough. Um, but, you know, that 
in my way, in my eyes, you're not going to beat Adonis Stevenson fighting on the back foot. You've got to be bringing it to him a bit more. And the problem is, in bringing it to him, you're risking, you know, coming up against his power, which is obviously the guy's strong suit, and he's obviously going to uh, very likely knock you out. So it's a, he's a difficult man to beat in this sense. Um, you know, it's a very convincing victory. He's now beaten Chad Dawson, Javoris Cloud. Bellew, Donis Stevenson, not Donis Stevenson, but beating uh, Donald Boone, who's the journeyman star fighter who'd beaten him earlier on in his career. So the question is really, where does he go from here? Um, the obvious answer to that is Sergei Kovalev. I'm going to do a video on Kovalev's fight later. Um, but Kovalev won by second round knockout, landed a, another devastating knockout. Uh, he's a fighter I've been incredibly impressed by. Uh, I'm a massive fan of Kleberly and... I was amazed how easily he took Clever apart. So, yeah, that would obviously be a good fight. Um, my money would probably be on Kovalev for that one, but that's a very tight fight. Um, he seemed to suggest in his post-fight press conf, post-fight interview, was Stevenson was very clear that he didn't want to be intimidated by Kovalev, and he was open to the fight. He viewed the uh, you know the more fan-friendly matchups as Carl Frotz and Bernard Hopkins. And I think it's certainly true that amongst the general public, Frotz and Hopkins are bigger names at the moment than Kovalev. Uh, amongst the boxing hardcore, they realise that you know Frotz and Hopkins are perhaps two ageing fighters, whereas um, you know whereas Kovalev is the sort of up and coming one who could cause a real danger. Um, both the Frotz and Hopkins fights would be interesting fights. I'd watch them both. Um, would Stevenson want to come down to super middleweight? Because I find it unlikely that Frox is going to go up to light heavyweight. He's so comfortable at the super middleweight bracket. Um, that would be an interesting one. I know Adonis says he can still make you know, middle, super middleweight. So we'll have to see. And he is a shorter guy. So you know, perhaps that is the case. But it's really whether he wants to train and, and lose the weight to that extent to get back down to super middleweight. Um, the Hopkins fight is, a, is another interesting one. Um, Hopkins has a, you know, a tendency to... You know, uh, a tendency to fight boring fights and expose these young up and comers. I remember when Tavoris Cloud was the the next big thing, and Hopkins, you know, completely exposed him. Could he do the same to Adonis Stevenson? I don't know. I think Adonis has already destroyed Chad Dawson, who's who's beaten Hopkins. Let's not forget. So, yeah, I mean, Hopkins is obviously the big name, and you know, that's a big money fight. Carl Frox is obviously a, a big money fight. That's a pay per view fight on both sides of the pond. Um, Sergey Kovalev, that's going to be a massive fight one day. Uh, Kovalev is perhaps not as big a name, and to be fair, Adonis Stevenson could be a bigger name, and beating Hopkins and Frotz could make that fight even bigger in the future. So we'll have to see what goes on. There's a lot of credi credible, you know, opponents and fights that Stevenson can go down. It'd be interesting to see what route he takes. Um, I think the key thing from last night is I was really impressed with his uh, his boxing ability, his ring general sip, his jab. Um, I thought. He looked like a really decent fighter with or without his power. And I'm confident that even without the power, he'd have uh, you know, pretty much won every round against Belly. Uh, and his power is obviously frightening, as it is with Kovalev. It's just amazing timing that these two massive punches have come on the scene at the same time, really. Um, with regards to Belly, he fought with credit. You know, he, he kept it sort of close and competitive despite you know losing... Uh, where he goes from here is a difficult one. You know, he's he's lost to a, a massive puncher like Adonis Stevenson. He's also been comfortably outpointed by Nathan Cleverly, and again a tight fight, but a fight that Cleverly did so superior technical ability and superior skill set and superior natural advantages in terms of hand speed, footwork, um, you know, that sort of thing. So he's kind of in a bit of no man's land in the sense that he's you know, Tony Belly's a fighter who can be outskilled. Cleverly, he's a fighter who can be knocked out, Stevenson, and he's a fighter who can fight a boring, nothing fight, and you know get sucked into a, you know, a really dubious decision. I, I know Chilemba scored a draw against him, so I mean, his record slightly blemished now. He's also not a massive name. Um, he's not a fighter with a big enough name, to sort of get him, you know, glamorise. Despite you know the fact he's lost a few times, and there definitely are fighters out there like that. Uh, Chad Dawson is an example he's lost a few fights recently but he's got that name that he can get himself in big money fights I don't think Bellew's necessarily got that and it's a question of what Bellew really wants to get out of it um, one thing I did note with interest is 
that you know, despite the fact he weighed in at you know the required weight, Belly was on one ninety for the night of the fight. So he's he's obviously big for the weight. He's a tall guy. Um, is perhaps the biggest money fight for Tony Belly a cruiserweight contest against Nathan Cleverly? Is that a fight that could put the winner in a real good place? Uh, you know, I think it's unlikely that. Bellew is going to retain, you know, get a version of the the world title at light heavyweight. You know, if he's not good enough to beat Stevenson and he's not good enough to beat Cleverly, he's hardly going to be good enough to beat Kovalev and Hopkins. And he just doesn't bring the name to get himself in those fights um, necessarily. So it's a long road back for him. Uh, it would, it really wouldn't surprise me being how big he is at the weight, being the fact that he was a heavyweight as an amateur, if we saw him make the move up to cruiserweight and to follow Cleverly. Um, perhaps he could say that his, his power and his punch resistance might be improved if he wasn't having to cut weight. So we'll see how it we'll see how it goes. Uh, as I say, Tony fought with credit, but I don't necessarily, you know, see him. I think that was a big chance for him yesterday, and I think he he lost conclusively. So fair play to Tony, but where he goes from here will be interesting. Stevenson is, um, you know, that Stevenson's got a lot of doors open to him. Be it Kovalev, Frotz, be it Hopkins, they're all massive fights. And, uh, you know, Stevenson uh, is 36 himself, so he's going to want as many paydays and as many big fights in the next year or two as possible. He's not going to want to, you know, hang around and, you know, let these let these occasions pass him. So we'll see where both guys go from here. Uh, it's a long road back from Bellew, but he did fight with credit. Stevenson, very impressive as a boxer as well as a puncher. And... Uh, I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts. You know, how how highly do you rate Stevenson? How do you compare him to Kovalev? How do you how, would you put him in against Hopkins? Uh, what about the Carl Frost chat? And uh, also, where does Belly go from here? Is my chat about him moving to cruiserweight realistic? What do you think? Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to do a video on Kovalev later, so please subscribe, and you can uh, you'll see that when that one pops through. Thanks very much.